had been tear gassed, and I was extremely upset, so I went in solidarity for the Occupy movement. I can say I'm not an occupier, but I stand for economic justice because I understand what it's doing to Oakland right now and what it's doing to our community. And I was videotaping a man get arrested, and the police knocked the phone out of my hand, and I was asking for my phone back, and they beat me up and threw me to the ground, and it was on TV. And the next day, I didn't go to school because I had just gotten out of jail. But the next day, I went to school to find my kids extremely upset because they see what's going on. Right. And all they, they understand. They feel hopeless because they feel like nobody cares about them. And I'm sorry I'm crying right now because I'm passionate. And I face this and I grew up with hope.
just want to remind you, we're almost ready to close, but please stay to the end because we're just not talking tonight. Cheryl, Al, and myself, we do have a plan that's going to resolve the situation. And once these closes close, we're going to drop the plan and we all can go home with some authority. So without any further ado, our political organizing director, Elizabeth Alexander. Because we know that we're being screwed on all ends, right? So I want to. So we've been talking a lot about what's going to happen. So I, I want to take a moment and ask you what's been going on for you. So I'd like you to kind of go along with me for a second. So could everyone who knows someone in foreclosure please stand up? And if you're already standing, please raise your hand. Now look around. See how many people are raising their hands. Now if you know someone that's lost health care, is paying more into their health care, or is without health care, and that's something that's happened to them in the last couple of years because it's become unaffordable, please raise your hand or stand up. Now that's a lot of us. Now please raise your hand if you've taken wage cuts or you've uh, deferred raises in the last couple of years. I should be raising both hands. <laughs> Come on now. That's right, that's right. Y'all giving up a lot. We all have given up a lot. Now I want you to stand You've taken furlough days. <laughs> now, how many of y'all have kids in the university system or city colleges and have had their tuitions go up? And how many folks, and I don't know if it's about for you in Oakland, but maybe for some of your, your spouses or your partners, have, have had to contribute more to your pensions or have seen your pension under attack? How many people here owe more on their home than it's worth and will never pay off that loan or know someone in the situation? And how many folks know that bargaining has been harder than ever because of the anti-worker attacks that try to single us out and divide us from our communities? That's right. So that's what the Great Recession looks like. It's not a theoretical attack. It's an attack that hits us at every single point of our lives. It's an, attack, it's an attack on us as workers, as parents, as students, as homeowners, as renters, as retirees, as elders, as people in need of health care. And that's what it means when we say we are part of the 99%. It's that we are being hit everywhere. And that's why our union has been proud to stand by and work closely to stop foreclosures. Many, how many people have ever made a phone call or done an email or showed up at a press event to stop one of your coworkers, one of the community members in foreclosures? Couple of us, maybe more of us can do that. Um, so I wanna actually reflect on some of the proud work that y'all have done this year. Um, because, especially folks in public works, you guys made it possible through foreclosure blight by taking the press and taking elected officials on foreclosure blight tours to show just how bad blight is, is, uh, is uh, costing Oakland. And we brought in almost a million dollars because of your hard work. So we need to keep that up. So uh, the other thing that y'all have done, and it's a continued fight, is to stop Goldman Sachs from robbing $5 million a year from the city of Oakland on a bond that was already paid off. So this is what our political program looks like. It's not just about getting people elected, but that's really important too. And it's not just about initiatives, but that's really important too. So I'm gonna ask you, and I'm gonna ask you to step up to the challenge. How many people here will make a phone call this year to save a, for, a, a coworker who's facing foreclosure? How many people will send an email or come to a press conference to, to fight for one of your coworkers who's facing foreclosure? Thank you. How many people will come to a press event to stop Goldman Sachs from robbing $5 million from Oakland? I should see every one of your hands up there. <laughs> How? Oh, it's on my list, don't worry. So one of the things that we're working on is working at the state level to actually stop foreclosures. Every foreclosure, who knows how much every foreclosure costs the city, city of uh, Oakland? $20,000. Wow. 
Is that $20,000 well spent? Is that $20,000 that we could use that better? That should go for jobs? Parks? We have a lot of things that we could do with that $20,000 of foreclosure. So we want to stop them overall. So we're actually pushing for state legislation to call a moratorium and mandatory loan modification for everyone in foreclosure. Would that help you out? So how about for y'all not in foreclosure? Well, we also want it to be mandatory to take, take your loan down to the market rate. So reduce the principal down to what it's actually worth. How much money would that put in your pocket? That would put $71 billion into the pockets of working people around the country, and that would create more than $2 million here in California, and it would help out a lot of workers. So that's the kind of legislation that your political team is working on. Now, how many people will come with me to Sacramento to demand this? And how many people will make phone calls and, make e and send emails to your relatives to, to do this work too? And finally, how many people will circulate petitions to tax the super rich so that we can make California whole again? So I want you to see Steve Gilbert in the back, who's going to have those petitions for you on Monday to start circulating. And the final thing is, how many people will stand with folks like Mara and other folks who are in Occupy who are facing way too much police brutality and are being blamed in the media for the fight that they're waging alongside us. So y'all, the load is heavy, but if we all pick up a little bit, we can do incredible things. And I look forward to 2012 with you all. Thank you so much. We will overcome, y'all. We shall overcome. This next speaker, I also had an opportunity to meet through the Legacy Local 790. Yeah! This brother, I've always been able to go to and, and speak to him what was on my mind, the way I observed it, the way I took it in, and he's always been able to break it down to me. So, Brother Rodney, AKA Correga Hart, you're my mentor, man whether you know it or not, brother. This man is a published writer. Uh, he's a union and community leader, labor and community studies instructor at City College of San Francisco. Without further ado, brother Correga Hart. Good evening, everybody. I know there's a lot um, more to come, and I'm not going to, I'm going to cut it short, actually. There's, um, you know, you can't really talk about labor history in, in four minutes. <laughs> so I'm just going to say something real quick. I want you to imagine a world where there's no Social Security, no unemployment compensation where unions don't have the right to organize. Right. They don't have the right to bargain. They don't have the right to have representation. And there are no public sector workers. Right. Where there's no minimum wage, no overtime pay, no 40 hour work week, or any laws to protect children who work. Now, I'm talking about the 1930s. But we could as well, might as well have been talking about today. Yes. Right. Okay. And it seems as if every time in this world, labor or community began to make progress, and we began to push that boulder up the hill, somebody gets on the other end and push it back. We push up, they push back. We push up, they push back. And I'm saying that a system where we cannot make progress in, we don't need. That's right. It will not work. This system is not working for the majority of working people and poor people. We need a new system. Yeah. And I didn't bite my tongue on that. Teach. Teach it now. Teach. 
What we need now, and I'm gonna cut it real short here, is that we need to build a mass movement. A movement with an agenda that brings everybody to the table. We need a united front where we can coordinate our tactics and send a powerful message and shut this sucker down. Small, sporadic actions will not win. Labor by itself cannot win. The community by itself cannot win. It's a new day. We need new tactics. Let's get organized and shut it down. All right. Because we've been asleep, especially here in Oakland. This is the home of the Black Panther Party, right. of which I was the chairman at one point. 1966, the party started here in Oakland. 1967, I just want to note from my sister Dorothy that Huey P. Newton was shot and the cop was shot and killed on 7th Street trying to go get some barbecue. Might have been your place. But anyway. <laughs> That's part of the free Huey piece, and that encouraged a lot of people to understand the free Huey meant free all oppressed people. That's right. So we were seeking uh, all kinds of issues, and we certainly talked about police repression, and what we did was put guns in the street, and everybody remembers that. So when we talk about what we're going to do, we have to remember that, it's, well, I like to quote Che Guevara, that you know, words are beautiful, but actions are supreme. Okay. So all this conversation can be good. You organize, you, got, you ain't getting no jobs, you know where the money is. It's sitting down there at the port, you got billions of dollars. Y'all know how to do what you need to do. You could shut the city down if you felt like it, there and you is. have an example from the occupied people. There you go. So let's not pretend that we don't understand what to do. And when people oh, yeah. want to invoke Dr. King's dream, let me remind you, the dream wasn't about walking up the mountain, holding some hands, saying, come by y'all with some little children. It was all about a poor people's campaign. They set up a tent city in Washington, D.C. and occupied Washington, D.C. And King, King was killed at the time and assassinated. Everybody thinks that James Earl Ray murdered King. Obviously, is uh, either uh, completely insane or we're going to have to have a conversation with you about your ability to analyze anything. Bottom line is that Dr. King was assassinated by the government of this country right. as he was on the march to talk about the poverty and the disparity in this country, going into D.C. to set up, oh, Tenth City in D.C. Now, Tell people sure. get that, and he wasn't talking about nonviolence, as people like to say, this business about what happened on Saturday, and all these little petty critics talking about the occupiers. I was out there with the occupiers. I'm not young, white, or middle class. Clearly not young. Clearly not white. And I'm going to tell, tell you, I'm not middle class. It's two classes, 99 and 1, and that's what they brought us. They showed us what the cap. they gave us the language about capitalism. You got people like Newt Gingrich trying to act like he's not a capitalist. That's how bad it is, okay? Because we now understand something. So the whole question of Occupy was to take over something. I joined with Occupy in the hood. 
when we're going to start taking over some buildings and building some clinics the way the Black Panther Party did and anything else. If they took over the wrong building and made a little minor error, it was a strategic error, but we need to take some buildings and do some stuff and stop acting like we don't understand what the problem is. We are the majority. If we're the 99%, it shouldn't be hard to go into City Hall and do what the hell we got to do. Now, I want to remind everyone that as I told these uh, Negroes on the City Council, uh, Destiny Brooks included, uh, Larry Reed included, and uh, Fuente, the Mexican, and the women, all of them, they didn't get there by because they earned it, they got there by the blood. City College of San Francisco, where he and Danny Glover took leadership and led the longest student strike in American history. Brother Thomas has played a leading role 
in many initiatives in this country. Local 10 initiated the Million Worker March that occupied, occupied the Lincoln Memorial on October 17, 2004. May Day 2008 shut down 29 ports up and down the coast. A boycott of Israel vessels in response to Israel's commando murders on international waters. Leader on the Justice for Oscar Grant movement. Brother Thomas travels include Bangladesh, Brazil, Cuba, France, Iraq, Iran, Japan, Mexico, Spain to attend conferences to build labor solidarity across the world. No further ado, Brother Clarence Thomas. Let me first of all say, I want to thank Sister Dorothy, the owner of this wonderful establishment, Everett and Jones, SEIU 10 to 1. As I look around this room, I see some who are Marxist-Leninists, others who are anarchists. We have members of the clergy. Democrats and others. <laughs> That's what it's going to take to make change in this country. I just want to remind the people in this room that Dr. King was red baited because of associations with those on the left. Dr. King understood the class analysis. We can't, if we can't change the system, we cannot change the president. I repeat, if we cannot change the system, we cannot change the president. We need to understand one thing. Democracy is not just about going to the polls to elect officials. That's right. Democracy starts when the citizenry takes its full responsibility and challenges those in power. That's, right. That's the state, and that is capital. That's right. And that is the only way that working people and people who are oppressed in this country get changed. That's right. I remind young people all the time that black people did not get the right to vote by voting. We got the right to vote by organizing and mobilizing in our own name, independent of the Republican and Democratic parties. There is an election that is about to take place this year. We know that President Obama leans to the right. He bows to the pressure from the Tea Party and the extreme right. We Occupy, labor, the interfaith community, environmentalists, social justice organizations need to be making demands upon President Obama from the left. We need to be in the streets organizing and mobilizing. I'm a member of the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, local 10 in San Francisco. Sister Baruka spoke very eloquently earlier about the struggle in Longview. I just want to touch upon a couple of things that everybody in this room needs to understand. The governor of the state of Washington, Chris Gregor, had one dozen meetings with EGT, an international grain conglomerate, and the president of our union to sit down to hash out an agreement. Nothing happened. It wasn't until the fourth largest port in the United States was shut down and some 40 to 50,000 people marched to that port, came to the city of Oakland, basically shutting down the city for one day. That's right. Then on December the 12th, 
Port of Oakland, Port of Longview, the Port of Seattle, the Port of Portland, and major demonstrations at every port up and down the coast took place. It doesn't take much to wonder what the White House was thinking about this. That's right. That's right. That's right. Explain it. President Obama did not want to see this particular kind of action duplicated across the country. That's right. The only time working people are able to exercise any power and leverage is when we shut down. That's the only leverage that we have. That's the only leverage that we have. You members of SCIU 1021 need to understand this. You cannot allow your leadership That's simply right. to engage in negotiations. That's right. You have to take militant action. Rank and file militant social justice action. If you want to make sure and hold your leadership accountable. In Longview, Local 21, our members fought the police. They stop trains carrying grain. This is what is necessary in order to defend what you have. I'm going to wrap it up, but I want to say this. Now is the time for methodical, intelligent, and strategic action. It's been talked about that here tonight. Labor is on its last leg. Only 7.2% of the private sector belongs to a union. Right. This is the lowest since 1900. Okay. I'm going to share a little bit about my personal life. I'm 64 years of age. And in the year I was born, 1947, was when labor was at its highest peak of 35%. That is when Taft-Hartley was introduced. The Slave Labor Act that Harry Truman vetoed and the Dixiecrats and others overrode that veto. It's had a lot to do with creating right to work. We now have 23 right to work states because Indiana just joined them. That's up in the north. What are we to do? We got to take the gloves off. We not only have to fight back, we have to resist and shut down. So I'm going to close with this. There's a slogan that's been associated with the ILWU. It's called an injury to one is an injury to all. I'd like for you to help me join, join me in saying that statement three times. An injury to one is an injury to all. An injury to one is an injury to all. An injury to one is an injury to all. Thank you. Okay, thank you for staying again. We've got about 10 more minutes, and here's what we need to do. Now, a lot of the speakers tonight have talked about power doesn't concede to anything but another power. That is true. What happened to us as union workers affects people who aren't even unionized because of the fact that we have certain wages, whether we know it or not, sets the wages for people who aren't unionized. And as, as ours have been driving down for the last eight years, others have been driving down. So it is our obligation, it is our responsibility to stop. Everybody I pass in the workplace, I'm sure all of us, I'm sure Cheryl and Al share the same experience. When are we gonna stop the furlough days? When are we gonna stop the PERS? When are we going to start getting treated right at work? When employee relations is going to stop dogging people for no good reason? When are we going to stop hiring people who 
forced another city into receivership. We're going to stop it now. Now, my job, my obligation is to connect the internal dots. My brother and sister back here, they're going to connect other dots. But internally, this is what we need to do. Number one, I need all the stewards in the room to stand up or raise your hand if you're already standing so these people know who you are. These people have had meetings on Saturdays, on Sundays, and late into the night to assist with this program, as well as getting here today pretty early to help us decorate and so forth. And I really want to say thank you, Cheryl and I and Al, say thank you to all the students. Now, here's what we need to do. At the end of the day, Here's how we're going to stop them. Number one, they admit that we're in an economic crisis. Number two, we know we've given back 15. We marching back to the plantation no matter what color we are. So here we go. We are going to provide and produce a letter, a petition type letter on letterhead. And what it is going to say it's going to say it much more intellectually and eloquently than I can say it tonight because we're going to have some professional people write it. That's what we pay our dues for. Now, the letter's going to say, admitting that we're in a crisis from 12 to 13, and understand people, Cheryl, Al, and myself, and, and want to express to you that we are in a war that is not just about redevelopment. It is about a reorganization. It is about privatization. And this is not going to be two weeks. It's 12, January 12 of 12 to January 13. We're going to have a plan, and we have a map. We are going to put forth a letter on letterhead that is going to state, as part of the cost savings and crisis resolve, we request to have the city of Oakland review all contracts that duplicate work that is provided by city employees and cut and cut by 50% in a in a rational way in order to save the tax dollar now we need everybody to sign on to this we need everybody's name on it and we're going to either present it. We haven't decided how we're going to present it yet. Some say a press conference. Some say at council. But you can bet the city administrator, every council person, and the mayor's name will be on it. And we will call them out. We already have a committee set up to, to review the reorganization of which each of us are on that, along with case matter experts. That was a victory. A victory was the fact that they wanted to force a reorg by February 1st. By the efforts of everyone in this room who's been named tonight, that has been fought back, and they have to meet with us on every line item issue between now and what is it, Jan, uh, June. So that is our war. But what we want to do within the next two weeks is provide the city with a demand to stop the contracting out. Because if we don't stop that, we know that that is at the forefront of everybody's mind. What is going on with people being laid off while they increase contracting out? Because they're doing it through the back door. The charter reads a certain way. They are breaking the spirit of the charter by going to an attorney and saying, how can we break this? Well, we're going to put them in a forum where they're going to have to express to the city how Ill immoral they have treated us. But the first thing we need to do is have people, we need people to help push this petition through the workplace. We need people to be captains in their workplaces. And we, that's why we have you here tonight, so that we can connect the dots on how we work together to resolve our current predicament in the city of Oakland. And it's imperative that we all throw away, put aside any differences other than we need to feed our families, we need to pay our mortgages, and we need to come to a job that respects us, a job that when I first came here could be a career if you so desire. That you didn't have to come to work wondering if in fact 
this was your last two weeks. So if, if you feel like I feel, like we feel, this is our first step. This is the first step we want to take with you all, is that we will create the letter. We need people that we can get to in the workplace to help push it through. And then we will decide as a group how that letter lands. But the first thing we need to do is get the letter and get the signatures. Do you think that's a decent idea? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get out the way. Social and economic justice has been a union calling card for years. And I always tell people that we've forgotten our role in social and economic justice. Well, the city of Oakland has reminded us that because we forgot our role, they forgot how they're supposed to treat us. So at the end of the day, they're forcing us into the battle on social and economic justice. So we in it, but we're going to be in it to win it. Thank you. About a union, but I can say what the union has done for me as far as a union member. And all I can say is we, we, we just have to stick together. I, the reason, and it shouldn't have been the reason, I should have just became a member, you know, just became an active member anyway, but I was picked on. I guess I looked like a doormat to, you know, some managers, and they picked on me and picked on me until I ended up being suspended. And I'm wondering why. No training, no nothing. You just throw me in this job. And I didn't have anything. You know, no nothing. So that became, that became my, my focus, is to go ahead and fight. Because there's no way that I'm going to stand here and allow another manager, another supervisor, another director, another anyone suspend me for something that I knew nothing about. You will not throw me in a job and sabotage me. And that's why I became a member. And in so many words, that's why a lot of you should become members. If nothing else, if nothing else, it is time to wake up. They have sent out 2,500 layoff notices. Pretty much all of us in this room got those notices. And if this don't wake you guys up to fight, I don't know what else will, OK? Because I would be pissed off if none of you start coming together because this is not about us. This is not about us as the leaders and the staff. This is about all of us. We all pay our dues up in here. So I'm going to tell you right now, and excuse me for being a little harsh and passionate, but I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want to hear and I'm putting you all on notice now. I don't want to hear what are you guys doing because what in the hell are you guys? I'm sorry for the baby. and tell you what you need to do for your own union. You do not rely on anyone else to fight for you, but you. We are here to assist you in this fight, not to fight for you. You fight for yourself. Isn't that what you pay dues for? That's why, that's why I'm involved, because I want to see firsthand what my union dues are paying for. And it's not to pay for staff to do our work for us, it's not to pay for us, who are volunteer leaders, elected leaders, you elected us to be your leaders, but this is not about us. This is about you all, and we all, like Ms. Brown said, we all have the power. We have to realize we have the power. How many times do I tell you guys this? We all have the power. It's time for us to stand up and show it. Together. I, all together, that's right, all together. We're in alliance with other unions, with the city of Oakland, because they got the same notice too. So guess what, people? We're not in this alone. You know how they say it takes a village to raise a child? Well, damn it, this is the village, OK? And with the, the, the different speakers and the community leaders that have come out today and spoken, it's going to take all of us. We're all in this. We are the 99%, as everyone keeps saying, and it's very true. We have to really realize and believe that this is what it is, people. It is time to fight, and it's time to organize. Next time the negotiations come around, 
We want a strong cat team. It always falls by the wayside. Cat team means contract action team. Right. Action team. That's, right. That's what we want to see. I don't want to hear your complaints about what we're not doing because you stand that damn mirror in your face and you ask yourself. And you curse yourself out because I'm not hearing it no more. I'm not hearing it anymore. All I want to hear is that you guys are standing up with us and we are all going to fight this together. Understand me when I say that? I'm gonna keep it simple, you guys. We have some dynamic speakers here tonight. I hope you guys take this message home with you. Think about what was said. Let it digest very well. And come prepared tomorrow ready to fight. Let, let your coworkers who are not here know what went down tonight. My job is to talk about the external. The external is, is, is we it's Ace, it's the mom and pop stores, it's Dorothy of Everett and Jones. These are the folks who we provide the services for. We need to make sure we go the extra mile and deliver that service to them. What's really going on internally, we have some managers that are mismanaging the funds in the city of Oakland and mismanaging us out of jobs. It's up to us to manage them to ensure that we keep our jobs. We have to hold them accountable. If you know something ain't right, speak up. Bring it to us. If you don't want to be the voice, we'll be your voice. But we need your eyes and ears in the workplace to identify what's going on wrong so that we can fix it. Right now, the mayor and the council, they're doing damage control. They're not ready for us. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. We have a long ways to go. This is just the beginning. I've been with the city 23 years. This is the first time we've ever had a meeting of the minds on this level. That's right. That's right. We're planning on doing more of this. We want to be transparent. We have technology up the yin yang. We have Jeff Heyman, who is our website master. information is on the website. If you can't get a hold of anybody, please go to the website. He's the Zen master. He's the Zen master. <laughs> um, I want to thank Dorothy. Yes. Without you, this couldn't be possible. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of history in this room, you guys, from the speaker list. And they all know each other. And we're going to have to invite them back again. Yeah. We need their words of encouragement. We can use, we take the old, because without the past, you can't have a future. Thank you for coming. I hope if we, if we missed anybody, we're sorry. We had a lot on our plate this evening. But please, somebody call my name? So please, you guys, go home safely. Remember what was said tonight. Make sure you share it with your members tomorrow. Don't let it die tomorrow. Don't let it die next week. The city doesn't have a plan. We've asked them for a five-year plan. They can't even have a one-day plan. I love all y'all. Oh, hold on, hold on. We have a gentleman who's requested 30 seconds. I don't know what he has to say, but we don't want to ignore anybody. How y'all doing? My name is Boots Riley. Uh, I'm with a rap group called The Cool, but I'm also with Occupy Oakland. And, and we want to offer our solidarity to you in your struggle. You see that, that, that we are all part of Occupy Oakland, and we want to help. When, when y'all are ready to fight, we need to be fighting with y'all. We need to be making sure 
that it's not just SEIU fighting, that, that the rest of the community knows that your struggle is their struggle and vice versa. That's what it's all about, is solidarity, working class solidarity, 99% solidarity. I got a sign up list right here to be on our email list of the Labor Solidarity Committee for Occupy Oakland. Please sign it. Oh yeah, we, we were just told by our other folks from Occupy Oakland that y'all are, are ready to fight and we wanna, we wanna take guidance from you and we wanna offer our help. We got an email list right here. Please uh, meet me over there and sign up. Thank you very much. for you to sign. Could you please see Joe Kiefer to get those petitions? But my question to all of you, all the stewards, please see Joe. But my question to everybody